we love you. And the reason why we love you is because you loved us first. We can sing all day long to you in appreciation of your love. Our heart is grateful. We show our gratitude. We bring forth praises unto you, even the fruit of our lips, in giving, in singing thanks to you, singing praise to you, or even through Christ Jesus. We exalt you, Father. Thank you for our families, and thank you for our church family. Thank you for this great assembly, for these great people. Oh, thank you for your preservation, for the covenant of life, for the covenant of peace, for the covenant of preservation, for the, for the covenant of hope. We exalt you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to fellowship with you and with one another into this service. We exalt you, Jesus. We lifted in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask that you bless us by your spirit. Thank you for the blessings we have been receiving from you. We ask for more. Cause our hearts to encounter you. Let them encounter you to glory this morning. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Can you let me appreciate the choir? Appreciate the choir. Joy, the song you sang before I sang, you just better it. So I followed your spirit, which I now better than that song. So hey, why? The choir betted the two songs today. Joy betted on I betted the second one. So we have seven sons. Save it. Don't forget, don't let us lose any of our sons. Children church, carry your children. Uh, where's your teacher? Okay, you are wearing blue, so I did not recall. Good now. You, you will enjoy children church, don't worry. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Glory to Jesus forever. Good morning. Welcome to church. Happy Sunday. It's always uh, beautiful to see your beautiful faces in church. Can you welcome someone to church? Can you greet someone welcome them to church? My sister, you are welcome. God bless you. God bless you. Like the things God will do in your life, huh? people will know that it's only God that did it. Understand? And God has plans for you. Hmm? His plans, He has plans for you. And His eyes are all over you. His eyes are all over you. He has never forgotten you. You understand? I'm talking to you. He can't leave you. He can't leave you alone. Don't entertain the thought that as God left me. But as God left him to myself, he sees it. And he's going to help you. And the time to help you has come. The Lord will help you. The Lord says he will help you. He will help you. He will help you. The Lord will help you. In the things you have cried, that you have looked for help, that you have looked for solution, the Lord says he will help you. The Lord says he will help you. As I was standing there and trying and, and just waiting on the Lord, I was thinking about you. I was asking the Lord to, to speak to me, and the song I sang was what I felt was the response. And that would be your song. That this is this person you saved, this person you healed, this person you helped. That God, I'm grateful. Because He's going to save, He's going to heal, He's going to help you, and you're going to experience His love deeply in your heart. And that would be your song. As I was waiting on the Lord, that was the response I got for you, and that was the song. That song was better because of you. Can you put the lyrics on, on of that song? This is me you've helped. This is me you saved. That's your testimony, my sister. That's your testimony. That will be your song. Song that you won't have a reason to sing the songs of sorrow. No, 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 no. You won't sing the songs of sorrow. Because you you are made for great things. You are made for good things. And you must think of yourself in this way. God has great plans for you. Forget about what you've been through. Forget about where you are coming from. Forget about where you are. Think about the thoughts of God for you. You didn't save the song. This is me you saved. You understand? This is me you saved. This is me you healed. This is me you helped. This is me you loved. Baba, Boa, Dupe. That should be your song. You come back to thank the Lord. And the reason will be like, the reason will be that you have expressed his salvation. You have experienced his healing. You have experienced his help. And your experience is love in Jesus' name. We pray. Can I, just, I just feel like let us pray for our sister. Can I just pray that the Lord will that the Lord will send help to her? 
that she's helped of the Lord. That she's helped of the Lord. That help comes, that she receives help. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name of prayer. Once again, happy Sunday and welcome to church. I trust God it's going to be a great time in God's presence this morning. And he's going to bless us greatly in his word. In Jesus' name. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. So we've been looking at a conversation on the local assembly. The local assembly. How that the Christian man must be rightly connected to the local assembly. Because the local assembly, that is the church, the local church, is where God can reach the Christian man. If God is looking for you, if you are a Christian, if you are born again, and God is looking for you, God wants to reach you, he checks your address. And the address he goes to check is your local church, your local assembly. He checks to see if you are a member of the local assembly. He checks to see if you are part of a local assembly because that is the only way he can reach you. That's the only way he can bless you. Praise Jesus forevermore. And that's the only way you can receive the inheritances. Because inheritances are shared in families. Are you following my friends? And the church is a family. The church is not Shadru and Shami, Kosija and church. No, 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 no. The church is a family where everybody is your brother and your sister. Where there's real love, real concern, real care. Where we love each other as Jesus loves us. And we're genuinely concerned about the welfare of others. Where I'm part of your life and you are part of my life. Where I will offend you, you will offend me. I will forgive each other and we'll move on. I will still love ourselves. Because you don't, your brother in the house, Balika brother cannot offend you and you're angry and say you don't know your brother. Are you following me? I'm sure me missed you, insulted you this, this last week. Did she not abuse you? Yes or no? Has she stopped being your sister? Uh-huh. She's still your sister. You forget it. You move on. So in the church also, you will be offended. People will offend you. Your brother and sister will offend you. And you forgive each other and you move on. So local assembly is very, very beautiful. The local assembly is very beautiful. I must appreciate God's wisdom in establishing the local assembly. Praise Jesus forevermore. So we're looking at the spirit of the local assembly. The spirit of the local assembly. And uh, one fabric we are still considering in this spirit of local assembly is uh, our assembling together, our sharing of fellowship. How that as Christians, we must never forsake our assembling together. We must never forsake church. We must come to church. We must come to church and we must come early. Praise Jesus. So, assembling together, fellowship with one another, as we are doing right now, is part of the life of the Christian man. Without us worshiping together, without us coming to church, assembling together like this, we can't be normal Christians. Our lives will be abnormal. We can't be seen. We can't be the person that God wants us to be. We can't fulfill divine mandate. We can't fulfill divine destiny. It's the deception of Satan to try to keep you from church. That church, uh, church is bad. They are wicked. People don't love and all of that. Yes, they might, you might have encountered some churches where there's no love and all of that. Well, maybe that is true. But that is not the definition of the church. And the truth is, the fact that you go to a church and you see a church as imperfect, are you following me, shows that you are also imperfect. If there's going to be a perfect church, then all of you have to be perfect. Even if a perfect church exists, are you following me? The moment you enter into that church, it becomes imperfect because you are not perfect. Because you still have some weaknesses in you. And that is the reason for church. So that the Lord can help our imperfections and bring us to maturity. And that is the reason why we fellowship with one another, why we are, why we are, why we are brothers and sisters. So that the Lord can work on our weaknesses, on our, on, on, on our infirmities, until we become like Jesus. Glory to Jesus forevermore. So, we must keep assembling together. We must keep coming to church. We must keep sharing fellowship so we can grow and become more and more like Jesus and so we can fulfill our destiny. 
Praise Jesus, say come on. So, we've been in the book of Acts in considering this matter of our assembling together. And the last thing we looked at was that the destiny of our nation is in our hand and is in the spirit of our assembly together that we can ask God for and concern the restoration and prosperity of our nation. That if our nation is going to experience prosperity and restoration, it's going to be because of the prayer of the saints. Praise Jesus, say the more. That said, let me pick another point this evening, I mean this morning, evening, <laughs> this morning, praise Jesus, shout hallelujah, still looking at the spirit of our assembling together. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Now, something must be pressed on to the heart of the believer. The believer is not a victim in this world. Are you following me? The believer is not a victim of circumstances. The believer is not a victim of Satan. Are you following my say? Are you following my friends? I want to say, are you following my Satan? <laughs> are you following my friends? Praise Jesus forevermore. Can you say, I'm not a victim of circumstances? Can you say, I'm not a victim of this world? Friends, you're not a victim. And the reason why you're not a victim is because you're a Christian, you're a child of God. And the Bible says, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So the fact that you are in the faith and that you have put your faith in the Lord Jesus has put you in a position of victory. So is that you are not a victim in this world. You are victorious. Are you following me? And can I talk to you? Your victory even includes all your former failures. Are you following my friends? The victory of the Christian man does not... Are you following my friends? The victory of the Christian man does not only include the, the good things that begin to happen to him when he comes to Jesus. The victory of the Christian man includes even the evil things that happened to him before he met Jesus. Because for him, when he comes to Jesus, are you following me? Are, are you with me, my friends? He's now a new creation. And all things are now passed away. And all things are now new. So the man in Christ, the new creation man, the Christian man, are you following me? As he has no, he has nothing to do with his past. He has nothing to do with his past failures. He has nothing to do with his past, what, with the thing that has pressed him down. He's totally new. He's a totally new chapter. His name changed. His person changed. Your history changed in Christ. For the Christian man, are you following me? Your history did not start with when you are you following me? Your father might, might have molested you when you were young, when you were five years old and molested you till you were 18 or 21. You now made Jesus at 25. You might have committed several abortions, you might have done several crazy things, you might have gone through a lot of things, you might have been an adult, you might have been a young boy, you might have been a rough girl, you might have been anything. Are you following me? For the past 25 years of your life, are you following me? Praise Jesus, forevermore. Now, when you meet Jesus, the day you now meet Jesus, are you following me? When they are asking you to give account of your history, of your past, those things you went through, those things that happened, are not part of the record of your history. Are you following me? It might be there in your mind, it might be there in your memory, and that is why you have to allow the Holy Ghost to renew your mind. You have to allow him transformed by the renewer of your mind. Are you following me? So your history does not include all the things you've been through. For the Christian man, his history begins with Christ. Are you following my friends? Are you with me? The history of who? Of the Christian man does what? Begins with Christ. Okay, so what are we going to do with the past things you've experienced? So the Bible says... All things work together for what? For good. So we can make even the, the what you call your history, the bad past, the dark past, the things you've been through, the wickedness that people have shown you, the outbreak, the Bible says it can work for good. Are you following me? The Bible says that for you, ashes can become beauty. That it can give you beauty for ashes. That the things that have been completely destroyed, the Lord can rebuild it. Are you following me? 
The life of the Christian man is very powerful. Are you being my friends? There is nothing wasted in the life, in the history of the Christian man. Even his bad history, are you following me, can be converted into a glorious future. Are you following my friends? Are you following my friends? Even the bad history, the terrible experiences of the Christian man before he met Jesus, now that he's in Jesus, can be what? Converted into a glorious into a glorious experience, into a glorious future. The new birth, are you following me, is a great converter of waste, of waste products. Anything, any, any waste material in a man's life, are you following me? Just bring the man to Jesus, you see conversion. The new birth has the power of conversion. It can convert any kind of waste. So when your life is going ugly and dark, you've not met Jesus, are you following me? Don't try to make the life better. You can't make the life better. Are you following me? But you can bring that life to Jesus and make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior and receive Jesus into your heart. And the moment you do that, a conversion has begun. Because you are now a new creation man. Such that your past shame can now become favor. Such that the ashes of the past can now be made into a garment of beauty. So, when we are looking at your history from the records of God, we don't see the things you've gone through. We see that this man began with Christ. Because when you come to Jesus, you are justified. Therefore, being justified by faith. The Christian man is a justified man. The Christian man has no past record of wrongdoings and has no past record of wrong sufferings. Are you following me? Guys, if you are a Christian, if you are a believer, you are in a good place. God can beautify your life. God can beautify your life. Can you tell someone God can beautify your life? Say it that God will beautify your life. Just surrender that life to him. Praise Jesus evermore. And one of the ways he does that beautification is by putting in a local assembly where he can be taught the word of God and where you have brothers and sisters that can love you genuinely and care about you and help you grow in your Christian work. Glory to Jesus evermore. So I was saying that the Christian man is not a victim in this world. Praise Jesus for more. Now, many of us get saved and we have the mindset of a victim. We have the mindset of someone that is just, is just managing to pass through life. Are you following me? We're talking about what? The spirit of local assembly. We're talking about assembling together. Praise Jesus for more. We behave as as a rat that have been thrown inside water. We are not sure of life. We are not confident. We behave like victims. And one of the signs of such behavior, now hear me, before I say what I'm to say. The Christian man that is not genuinely looking forward to the coming of Christ is insane. It's not normal. Are you following me? Are you with me? Uh-huh. Can I say that again? The Christian man, the Christian man, the Christian man that is what? That is not genuinely and constantly and always looking forward to the coming of Christ, longing for the coming of Christ is insane. He's not a normal Christian. So the normal Christian man must be looking forward to the coming of the Lord Jesus. Because there's nothing in this world. Are you following me? I haven't said that. Are you with me now? One of the signs of a victim mindset is that the believer just wants to quickly go to heaven. Are you following me? That, let me just go to heaven. This world says, I'm just tired of everything. Let Jesus just come down and let, let, let everything just end. Let me just die now and just go to heaven. It's not because you love heaven, because you are a victim in this world. It's because the world has treated you so badly that you now feel you want to escape to a place where they will treat you well. Because you know that when you get to heaven, they won't treat you badly. Are you following me? The world has battered you so much. You've not laid hold on the world. You've not put the world under your feet. The world has dealt with you. Somehow, somehow, you now met Jesus. 
And you are still carrying a victim mindset around now that you are a Christian. So you just feel, let me just go to heaven. It's not because you are longing for Jesus. It's not because you are like Paul that says, I want to be, I want to be home with the Lord. Before, before Paul even said that, he had done a lot of work on the earth. He had conquered territories, conquered cities. Are you following me? So the Christian man just wants to go to heaven. If God saved you to go to heaven, the day he saved you, he take you to heaven. He's supposed to die. <laughs> Are you following me? Fidelis. If, God, if the reason why Jesus saved you, if the primary reason why he saved you is to take you to heaven, the day he gave your life to Jesus, he will just kill you and take you to heaven straight. You won't spend an extra second. Or, or you'll be like Elijah. He'll just carry you with the chariot of fire. To be a glorious, he'll carry you on glory, glorious exit. That's the real glorious exit. That's the real exit to glory. <laughs> Praise Jesus, everyone. Or you'll be like Enoch. you walk, 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 walk. You just disappear. We won't see you again. <laughs> Praise Jesus, everyone. But God's primary concern for the Christian man is not to take him to heaven. Because eventually, God is even bringing heaven to us. <laughs> Are you following, my friends? So, why the Christian man must be expectant of, of, of the coming kingdom of God, of the coming of Jesus, you must not have an escapist mindset of, let me just run away from this world and go to heaven. I hate it, sue me. I'm tired of this life. See Nigeria for the past many weeks now. Well, has been scarce. My children cannot eat. Gas is expensive. Oh, let everything, let Jesus just come. Let all of us go. No, Jesus will not come like that. Because he said he's coming for a glorious church. He's coming for a victorious church. He's coming for a church that is ruling and reigning. Are you following me? So the Christian man was not saved. Are you following me? Was not saved to make heaven. Are you following me? That's a victim. That's an escapist mindset. So next time you are trying to run to heaven, you don't even know the way to heaven. And if, if you if you deliberately go and start, stand in front of trailer, that's the way to hell. It's not heaven again. If you say you are tired of life, you don't go and stand in front of trailer, or you drink poison. You want to go to heaven? You are not going to heaven. No. They will welcome you in hell with clapping ovation, standing ovation. They will welcome you very well. Praise Jesus. So the Christian man was not saved primarily to come to heaven. Are you following me? We're talking about what our assembling together, and I'm showing you. The importance of our assembly together, the spirit, the spirit, what it does to us, how it helps us. Now, the Christian man was saved for kingdom service. Are you following me? Are you with me, my friends? The Christian man was saved for what? For kingdom service. Are you following me? The Christian man was saved for kingdom service. Now, of course. When I say kingdom service, it also includes the idea of your work in church as an usher, as a, as a member of the choir, a member of the media team and all of that, but it's not restricted to that. Are you following me? Kingdom service goes beyond your activities in the four walls of the church. Are you with my friends? Are you following my friends? Are you following me? Kingdom service is not. Let me first tell you. Let me so that you not you understand the teaching very well. So kingdom service includes, uh, but it's not restricted to your work in church. Are you following me? For example, the choir singing this morning is kingdom service. Tiles design is kingdom service. Are you, are you tiles design for church, not for his work? Let's. I'll still come to that part. Tayo's design for church is kingdom service. Mubarak on the projector is kingdom service. The people clean the chair is what? Kingdom service. So those are parts of the expression of kingdom service, but what? But they are not, but kingdom service is not restricted to that. In fact, the highest level of kingdom service is not in the church. <laughs> Danny, are you leaving? Okay, you want to, come, come and tell them what you want to do so that they can help you. Praise Jesus, tell them more. Are you following my friends? The highest level of what? Kingdom service is nowhere. It's not in the church. The reason we come to church, 
Why we are assembled together is so that we can be trained on how to do kingdom service in the world. The field of expression of our kingdom service is in the world. It's in our places of engagement. It's in the market, if when you go to the market. It's in the classroom. It's in your, it's at, it's in your workplace. It's in your business. It's in your career. It's in your education. Are you following me? If the highest level of kingdom service is in the church, how, in fact, you're not doing any work because you come to church only on Sunday and on Thursday. So what happens to the other days? What are you doing? Satan service. Are you following me? So, the highest level of kingdom service is not in the church. There's some level of expression of kingdom service in the church. And church is meant to train us for the work of the ministry. Ephesians chapter 4, I think verse 12. Are you following me? So, we are being trained for the work of the ministry. Give me that Ephesians chapter 4. Praise Jesus second more. Thank you, Jesus. The Christian man is being what? Trained for what? For the work of the ministry. Now, it is this work of the ministry that is what? Called what? Kingdom service. Are you following my friends? So, no, no, Ephesians chapter 4. The Christian man is, is being trained for what? For the work of the ministry. Go to, go from verse Verse 8. Wherefore he said, when he ascended upon high, he lay captive captive and gave gifts unto men. Uh huh. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended forth into the lower parts of the earth? Continue. He now descended is the same also that ascended up far above all levels, that he might feel all things older. So, what is the intention of Jesus? To do what? Talk to me, my friends. What's the intention of Jesus? To fill us. Can you say fill all things? So Jesus wants to fill the world of entertainment. He wants to fill the world of fashion. He wants to fill science and technology. He wants to fill medicine. He wants to fill media. He wants to fill education. Are you following me? So Jesus has a plan to fill all things. The church is not all things. Are you following me? All things include, but is not restricted to the church. Are you following my friends? In fact, we have more of all things outside the church than in the church. Are you following my friends? So, see the mission statement of your see, 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 see his mindset. He, that the reason why, oh my God, he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all levels. That's my philosophy. So he's saying that Jesus, he said that in my field of things. So he said that Jesus died and resurrected. Why? That in my field of things. This is dominion. Though we will still get to dominion explicitly in this spirit of the assembly. This is dominion. This is Jesus finding expression everywhere. This is Jesus in fashion. This is Jesus in education. This is Jesus in governance and politics. This is Jesus in entertainment, filling all things. Continue. And he gave some apostles. Now, he, he plans to fill all things. Are you following me? But how is he going to fill all things? Is by training the believer to go out into the world and fill all things for him. So that Tayo is not just doing kingdom design in church. So that when Tayo is at work and is designing for the worldly people that is bought that is not born again. Is is bought that is smoking in book. Are you following me? I'm not saying that is smoking in book. I want to paint the worst scenario. Is bought that is an adulterer that doesn't love Jesus. Huh? Is workplace full of unbelievers that is the only believer. Are you following me? So that as he's working and he's designing, are you following me? He is doing kingdom service. So that every of his designs speaks of kingdom. I don't have to write kingdom on it. Are you following me? He can say you make a design for 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 someone else to sew for a for, for a fashion designer. Are you following me? Unless you make a design for 
What is the to do that? Model. Are you following me? And he's not writing Jesus on it. No J on it. Okay, of Jesus. But that in that design, done for a model, are you following me? Kingdom can be seen in it. Are you following me? We can pass the kingdom can infiltrate Tyre's workplace. It can infiltrate everywhere that design gets through, through the design. Are you following me? Because a life has been passed into the design, which is the life of the kingdom. I follow my friends. Oh, you want to do design? Oh, okay, I don't want to do design. I thought you are asking for tire. <laughs> tire, build them. If, if they come and meet you, no free design. No, he's not church member. Anyway, I'm, I'm your PA. Anyway, I'm using for the, I'm your manager. What do they call it? I'm your manager. Anyway, I'm using for design. Let them come and miss me. We'll build them. <laughs> Praise Jesus, everyone. So that in the design, through Tyre's design, kingdom can be propagated. Are you following? Kingdom can be seen. So that through Hekas teaching, we can see Jesus. So that Jesus can feel the fear of education because Oyeka is there. So that, so that Jesus can feel the fear of building because fidelity is there. Of building and construction. Are you following my friends? Because his plan is to feel what? All things. But he's going to feel all things through his people. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Continue. For the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. Oh, friends, are you following me? For what? For the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. So, there's a work of the ministry to be done. Are you following me? And it's to be done by the saints. Are you with me, my friends? And what is this work of the ministry? It is the plan of Jesus to fill all things. So that as the saints are doing the work of the ministry, Jesus is filling all things. Are you following me? So that as you are, as you are doing your business, you are in the market, as you are in education, entertainment, education, fashion, whatever, you are carrying out the work of the ministry and through your work, Jesus is doing what? Filling all things. Are you following me? I'm talking about the spirit of local assembly and assembling together. So, we've seen that there's a work of the ministry to be done, which is the filling of all things of our Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to fill all things. Are you following me? But all things cannot be filled without the saints. Are you following me? And the saints cannot fill all things Unless they are trained for the work. So, for the perfecting of the saints is the building up of the saints. It's for the training of the saints. So, you actually have the ministry gifts. The reason why you come here on, on Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and on Thursdays, is so that the ministry gifts can perfect you, can train you, so that you can go out to do the work of the ministry. So you can go out to ensure that Jesus is filling all things. Are you following me now, my friends? Are you following me? So, the ministers, that is the, the, the fourfold ministry gift, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, are you following me? They are meant to train you so that you can go out to do the work of the ministry. You can go out to ensure that Jesus is filling all things everywhere. For they are defined on the body of Christ. And only as we do the work of the ministry will the body of Christ really be defined. Will the body be built up? Because if you do the work of the ministry at your workplace, are you following me? If you do the work of the ministry in school, are you following me? Kingdom will be revealed, Jesus will be revealed, and souls will be drawn to God. And the king and, and, and the body of Christ, the church of God, can experience growth. It can be built up. Are you following me? So, don't abuse a pastor that the church is not growing. 
you have to insult yourselves. Are you following me? Some of you look at the church and say, this church is not even green. Members are not even coming. And you say, the pastor is not even praying very well. The pastor is not working. Out. You are stupid. The work of green a church, are you following me? Is not primarily that of the pastor. Is the work of what? Of the saints. Now the work of the pastor is to train his saints. Are you following me? Then the saint now has to be responsible to go out to his places of engagement and do what? The work of the ministry. And as he's doing the work of the ministry, the body can grow, the church can grow. So if you're in a church and that church is not growing, it is shame on you, the believer. It means that you are not doing the work of the ministry where you are. Are you following me? Because many Christians don't understand this truth. And they want to cast aspersion on the ministers, on the pastor. Some of them even go as far as living. <laughs> Shameful believers. I mean shameless. I'm full of shame. They go as far as, oh, this church is not growing. Let me leave. Why is it not growing? It means your life is, 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 is worthless. Provided that the pastor is doing his work, that the ministry gift is doing his work. Ministry gifts are doing their work. Are you following me? Provided that they are laboring on you and training you, you must do the work of the ministry. And now we're going to know that you're doing the work of the ministry. The body will grow. The church will grow. There will be growth. Because there will be, there'll be people who see the kingdom life in your engagement at work, in your engagement in the market, in school, are you following me? And they will just want to be part of that kingdom. They will find your church. And if they don't find your own church, they will find another church. The point is that the body will grow. The church will grow. A believer, are you following me? A believer working at Aja, are you following me? Should be able, and he's living here, somewhere around Igondo. Are you following me? He should do the work of the ministry in his workplace in Aja. Are you following me? And souls are drawn to God, drawn to Jesus, but they can't come to his church in Igondo. But they should be able to, because of him, of that work of ministry, they can find churches around them and go. So the body will be green that way. See, we are meant, see, oh, this teaching, eh? We are meant to be growing church for each other. <laughs> are you following me? Do you get what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? Let me explain. Another pastor in another place, are you following me? Teaching his members very, teaching his members very well, and going out, and they are going out to do the work of ministry, and they're doing work of ministry in this area. Coming to work in this area, and all of that. Are you following me? If they are doing the work of ministry, and their church is not in this area, their work of ministry should attract people to Jesus. That people now find the church in that area. You understand? In this area, because those people are in this area. So that churches now begin to grow like that. You understand? So churches are not growing. Actually, why? Because believers are not doing the work of the ministry. Are you following me? So, the first indictment of your church not growing, your local assembly not growing, is what? Is on you. Can you say it's on me? Say it's on me. Say it like you mean it. It's on you. It's because you are not what? Doing the work of the ministry. Are you following me? My work is to train you for the work for the work of the ministry. So they can go out and, and review Jesus, and Jesus can fill all things, and the body can grow. Praise Jesus, everyone. So can you now see that the ministry gives his men to train you, and where do we train you? I, I can come to visit you, I can greet you on phone, but we train you where? In the church. We train you during church service, where we teach you, when we preach, when we pray, when we counsel, that's where we train you. Can you now see that we need to assemble together? Because without assembly together, you can't have training. If students don't, don't go to school, can, can they, will they have training? You must go to school. People say don't go to church. Are you following me? But they, but they don't say don't go to school. Why do you go to school? To be trained. To be a useful person in life. Why do you come to church as a Christian? To be trained. To be useful. To carry out the work, to do the work of ministry. I follow now, my friends. 
So we must not have a victim mindset. The Christian man is saved for what? Kingdom service. And I'm trying to describe kingdom service to you. Is your life, is the imprint of Jesus on the things you do in your place of engagement. Are you following me? Are you with my friends? He's placing the stamp of Jesus on your, on your, on your, on the clothes you sew. Placing the stamp of Jesus on the things you write. Placing the stamp of Jesus on your deliveries, on your work. And not, be, not because you took a rubber stamp and stamped Jesus. No, 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 no. But because your life, you have received training. Are you following me? Kingdom life is now part of your life. That whatever you do, the kingdom life slows into it. So people just undo your work. They undo the clothes you sew for them. And they feel something different. They know there's a difference. Between when you sew and when Jennifer sews for them. They know there's a difference. There's a way the clothes is on their body. There's a way they have dreams about Jesus. There's a way their heart is convicting them of sin. Because they have placed kingdom upon your work. Are you following me? So, do you understand kingdom service now? Kingdom service goes beyond the four walls of the church. I follow my friends. So, we must train you well to do your work well. But some of you even do your work well, but you don't have life to put on the work. You understand? Some of you are excellent at work, but kingdom can be seen at work because you don't have the life to put, to put kingdom on, on your work. So, your work, you're excellent at work, but people are still going to hell. People are not seeing Jesus at all. They're not seeing the trace of Jesus because they're not bringing the kingdom. Because like, you don't have training because they're not receiving training. You're not being trained. You're not receiving training. You're not carrying the life. Some people come to church on Sunday and that's the end of their Christianity after they leave service. Once Monday starts, they drop Christianity. They're just normal. You can't do kingdom, kingdom life that way. Praise Jesus, everyone. Are you following me? So the Christian man is saved for what? For kingdom service. In other words, the Christian man is saved to be a witness for Jesus. Are you following me? Are you with me, my friends? Toby, are you sleeping? Or you are meditating on how to be a kingdom servant? You better walk up and down. If I come and put you at the front, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be interpreting what I'm preaching in, in Yoruba. Praise Jesus, everyone. Shout hallelujah. So the Christian man is saved to be what? To be a witness for what? For Jesus. Are you following me? Are you following my friends? You are saved to be what? A witness for Jesus. You are saved because Jesus Christ says, the Bible says, Paul says, that the reason why he descended and ascended is so that what? They can feel all things. Are you following me? So, you are saved so you can be a witness for Jesus. So that through you, Jesus can be seen everywhere. So that through you, Jesus can feel everywhere. We're talking about what? The assembly life, right? Are you following me? No, I'll still show you very well. And his relation to what I'm saying. Praise Jesus, everyone. Can you say, I'm saved to be a witness? Now, come to me. If Jesus, if let's say today is when you got saved, you became born again today, and Jesus takes you to heaven today, can you be a witness? You are, God. You are a witness in this world. In heaven, they already know about They believe Jesus in heaven. They, that's, and in fact, that's why they are there. The people who wanted to do any of they sent them out. So if you want to go to heaven, you can't, there's nobody who wants to witness to in heaven. Who do, you, who do you want to witness to? Is it God or the angels? They will tell you about God. They, what you don't know, they will tell you. What do, what do you know about the stones of fire? <laughs> what, you know, well, those, those angels will tell you those things. They will tell you about the wings of glory. You, so what do, you, what do you want to tell them? What is witness? How, how much of Jesus has you seen? You know that the angels have seen glory. What do you, so which, there's no witness when you go and win heaven. All your witness is where? Is in this earth. Are you following me? Shout hallelujah. And the reward for your witnessing on earth is how you live in heaven. How you live in the kingdom. It's what you receive when, when Jesus comes. Are you following my friends? So can you say I'm saved to be a witness for Jesus? 
Are you following me? Now, whilst being a witness includes you carrying your Bible and your bell and preaching up and down. Are you following me? It's inclusive, right? You waking up, maybe morning cry, and all of that, boss evangelizing, pre- preaching in the classroom, one-on-one preaching, door-to-door evangelism, it includes your work of being a witness. But it's not, it's not restricted to it. Are you following me? It spreads out to what I've been saying before. It's included to how, what you do at your workplace. It's included to, it's, it includes how Jesus is expressed through you in your work, in your career, in your school, in your education, in your business. How Jesus is expressed. How Jesus is seen through you. Are you following me? Shout hallelujah. And, and we, must be doing, we must be doing everything together. You must be preaching on the streets. You must be preaching in the class. You must be pre- Are you following me? You must be talking to people about Jesus and your works, your career, your business will be revealing Jesus also. You must be excellent. And one of the, one of the things that will make your work, your career, reveal Jesus is your excellence. Are you following me? You can't do a nonsense job now and say you want to review Jesus. People will not believe you. You can't be lazy at work and say you want to review Jesus. You can't be nonchalant and say you want to review Jesus. You can't be a late comer. In fact, they will thank you. They will soon thank you. And say you want to review Jesus. Are you following me now, my friends? So, the Christian man is saved to be a witness for Jesus. <laughs> are you following me? Praise Jesus, everyone. We are saved to be what? To be a witness for Jesus. Shout hallelujah. But in order to be a witness for Jesus, we need <laughs> the fullness of the Spirit. Can you say the fullness of the Spirit? I can't hear say the fullness of the Spirit. Oh, I'm loving this teaching. Praise Jesus forevermore. I have freedom in my spirit to teach this text. Praise Jesus forevermore. Are you following my friends? Can I say the fullness of the spirit? So, the Christian man is saved to be a witness for Jesus. He's saved to show for the life of Jesus in everything he does. He's saved so that through him, Jesus can feel all things. Can you say, I am saved so that Jesus can feel all things? Hey, why are you sleeping? Your head is on the table. Say it again, I am saved so that Jesus can feel all things. Are you following me? So the Christian man is saved to be a witness for Jesus. That through his work, through his work of ministry, as he carries out his work of ministry, as he engages the world, are you following me? Jesus can feel all things. Are you following me? Praise Jesus, everyone. <laughs> now, what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm teaching is very powerful. Though it's simple. It's powerful and it's profound. But it's very simple. But you can't be a witness for Jesus without the fullness of the Spirit. The reason why many believers are not witnessing for Jesus at their workplace, not necessarily preaching with their mouth, why there's no imprint of kingdom upon the things they do, is because of what? There's no fullness of the Spirit. Are you following me? You can't be a witness for Jesus without what? The fullness of the Spirit. <laughs> Praise Jesus forevermore. To be a witness for Jesus, you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Don't worry. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm briefly today, I don't know if I'll finish it today. If I don't finish it this morning, I'll, I'll take it in the evening. If we don't finish it today, we'll look at it. We'll continue next week. But you it's, it's, it's see what I'm talking about. I know the way I mentioned baptism of the Holy Ghost, you're already thinking of, are you born again? Yes. Have you received the Holy Ghost? Yes. Oh yeah. Let me, no. Yeah, let me pray for you. Let me baptize. Yeah, begin to pray in another tongue. Yeah, he's now baptized with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> yes, he's baptized. 
Are you following? Are you with me, my friends? But there's more. Can you say there's more? You can't be a witness for Jesus without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Without the baptism of the Spirit. Are you following me? The reason why many believers are not witnesses for Jesus is because they are not being filled with the Spirit. They are not being baptized with the Holy Ghost. Are you following me? They are not what? Talk to me. They are not what? I didn't say they, are, they have not been baptized. Now, if you check the scriptures in Acts of Apostles, they might not have used the word baptism, but it's the same thing they are talking about. Said, and they were filled with the Spirit. And they were filled with the Spirit. Filled with the Spirit. Talking about believers. They were baptized again and again. Are you following me? Conversion, mm, oh, conversion, the new birth, is a one-time experience. But the baptism of the Holy Ghost is not one time. Your being filled with the Spirit is not one time. What happened to you the day you started doing shakalaba, shakata, kakala, blah, blah, It's not all about baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because other than shakaba, kakala, some of you, that's the only time you were baptized with the Holy Ghost. You've never been baptized again. <laughs> and that's the reason why many believers get to their workplace and they can't be a witness for Jesus. They get into the world and they can't be a witness for Jesus. Why? Because they are not baptized in the Holy Ghost. They are not being baptized with the Holy Ghost. They are not being filled with the Spirit. They do not have the fullness of the Spirit. Oh, friends, are you ready this morning? Are you ready to receive these things this morning? I can't hear you. Are you ready to receive these things this morning? Hmm. So, we are called to be witnesses for Jesus. Are you following me? <laughs> Our calling, hear me, my friends. Our calling is not to be born again. Our calling is to be witnesses for Jesus. We are born again so that we can what? Fulfill our calling. Are you following me? Are you with me? You are not called to be a new creation. Are you following me? Are you following me? You are not called to be what? A new creation. You are called to be a witness for Jesus, but you can't be a witness for Jesus without first of all being a new creation. Only the new creation can be a witness for Jesus. So, your being born again, your being a new creation, is the only pathway for you to fulfill your calling as a witness. Are you following me, my friends? The man of sin, the man in the flesh, the unbeliever, cannot be a witness for Jesus. What does he want to witness? What does he experience about Jesus? Does he even know about the life of Jesus? So, for you to be a witness of Jesus, you must have carried his life and have a relationship with him. So, the reason why you are a new creation is that you can what? You can be what? A witness for Jesus. So, you being a new creation, a Christian, a born again man, are you following me? Is so that you can be a witness. It has set you on a journey of being a witness. I follow my friends. Shout hallelujah. And you only get born again once. Are you following me? But now that you are born again, are you with me? You are not positioned to be a witness hmm? for Jesus. But being born again is not enough to be a witness for Jesus. Are you following me? And we have a lot of proof. We have many born again, many Christians, they are born again actually. And they are tongue talking. But they are not what? Witnessing for Jesus. Jesus is not feeling anything through them. Are you following me? And this is because to be a witness for to be born, to be born again, you believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You receive him as your Lord and Savior once. Are you following me? But to be a witness, you need to be immersed in the Holy Ghost. Always. <laughs> because the world you want to go and witness to is a dark world. Are you following me? The word you want to go with them is the what? It can quickly pollute you without this kind of immersion. 
Are you following me? The world you are sent to, to minister to, can quickly corrupt you, can quickly put out your fire, can quickly make you cold if you are not what? Immersed in the spirit. If you are not filled with the spirit, if you are not baptized with the Holy Ghost, oh my Jesus, if you are not what? If you are not baptized with the Holy Ghost. Don't worry, just follow me carefully. Shout hallelujah. Now, I said we are called to be witnesses for Jesus and we need the fullness of the spirit to carry this assignment. Are you following me? Of course! You can be filled with the spirit in your personal work, in your, in your closet. As you do your quiet time, study your Bible, pray, listen to messages, read Christian books, good ones, good books, good messages, not nonsense messages. Are you following me? You can be filled with the Spirit. And there are instances in the Bible where individual believers were filled with the Holy Ghost. Are you following me? And you find that times when they were filled, filled with the Spirit, are you following me? Even individually, I check this, the times they were filled, it was so that they can be witnesses. At the time, Peter became filled with the Holy Ghost and he came to speak. Not, if, not the upper room experience. So. Another time, I think in chapter 4, he, was, he began to speak. Guys, without this being filled with the Holy Ghost, you can't be a witness for Jesus. So. Are you following me? You can't be a witness for Jesus. So. Praise Jesus forevermore. Now, there's the context of you being filled with the Holy Ghost in your personal work with God. In your quiet time. In your private life with Lord Jesus. Are you following me? Are you following me? And even this contest only exists because you are rightly what? Connected to what? The local assembly. Are you following me? See, 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 see. Can I talk to you? There is no personal work with Jesus that a Christian man has if he has no connection with the local assembly. Nothing personal. Your personal work is not so personal. God only recognizes your personal work because you are connected to a local assembly. Are you following me? Are you with me, my friends? Shout hallelujah. You see a mango tree with a lot of mangoes. You now saw one mango separately, just, one mango just hanging from the air, just hanging from the cloud. You understand what I'm saying? This is a mango tree with a lot of mangoes. When also another mango, one, one mango fruit, you cannot, you, it's, it's just hanging in the air. You don't even know where, it's not connected to it, it's just hanging. What do you think about that kind of mango? <laughs> this is an abnormal mango. It can be a demon that, that turned to mango. It's not a normal mango. Are you following me? Are you with my friends? You just see a mango in the air, hanging. They not, no, no matter how fearless you are, they're they not going where to pick that mango to eat. You can't pick it. You can't pick it. Because the real mango that is a mango, are you following me? Must be on a mango tree. Or worse, it fell from a mango tree. I can see that it's around the mango tree. It must have connection with a mango tree. Are you following me? So any mango that has no connection with a mango tree are just hanging from the air. That fell from heaven like Odudua with a chain. <laughs> that, that, that Odudua story, eh? They, they, they've lied to us in this world, though. How, how many of you chopped that story? <laughs> Odudua, the man that climbed down, you know, they, they, go, they, they, now, they now gave him two bears, he now came down, he now created the water. Hi! <laughs> so any mango that is like Odudua that just came from heaven with a chain, an invisible chain I cannot see. You know now it's not a mango. You know you're afraid of it. But that mango is trying to be personal. I'm a personal mango. <laughs> Are you following me? I have a personal, I have a personal walk with the fruit family. I have a personal, I don't have this one you are doing all this mango tree. See all of you are just, all of you are just littered everywhere, all just connected together. Me, I want a very private walk, a very personal walk Personal relationship with the fruit family. So let me just be, let me just hang in the air. Nobody will relate to that mango tree. With that mango fruit. Nobody knows. He's not recognized as mango. Because mangoes are connected to mango trees. Are you following me? The reason why, but if you see the, if you see mangoes on a tree, are you following me? 
or around a tree falling on the floor. Will you be able, will you, can you pick it to it? Why? Because it's a mango. Even if, even, and, and the funny thing, that one on the floor, or the one on the floor, it might even be a demon. It might be, but, but it can't come to your mind. Because there's a connection with the mango tree. Are you following me? So, your personal work is only recognized because you are connected to a mango tree. Because you are already connected to a local assembly. Are you following me? You can't be a mango that wants to stand alone and hang from the cloud. Nobody knows you as mango. They'll be looking for the abalis that will, that will help them to throw you away from that street. Because they don't know what it can cause. They can, they can take his one evil spirit and to cause sickness in, on the, in the area. They'll look for pastors, imam, all of them to come and get rid of you. Because you're just hanging. Are you following me? So, the context of the personal work of the Christian man, are you following me? Is actually in the context of local assembly. The validity, are you following me? Of the personal work of the Christian man is where? Is in the context of local assembly. That mango that I described now is an invalid mango. It's not recognized in the fruit family. Why is it not recognized? It has no connection with what? With the mango tree. But it wants to be personal. So any personal work you are claiming to have, are you following me? Without a relationship with the local assembly, without being connected to the local assembly is what? Is an invalid personal work. It's an invalid work. Are you with me? Are you following me? So your personal work is only valid. Why? Because you are rightly what? Connected to what? To the local assembly. <laughs> Praise Jesus evermore. So I've said that to be a witness for Jesus, you need to be filled with the Spirit. You need the fullness of the Spirit. You need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And I said there's a contest in which you can receive this fullness of the Spirit in your personal work. And that even this contest of your, of your personal work of receiving the Spirit only happens because you are connected to the what? Local assembly. Because you are already connected. Can I move further now? So there's no... So, when I say the next thing, you won't misunderstand me. I already said there's a contest for you being fit personally. So, I said that to be a witness for Jesus, we need to, what, to be filled with what? With the Spirit. We need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Are you following my friends? Shout hallelujah. And it's in the Spirit of our assembly together that we receive the fullness of the Spirit. Are you following me? It's what? Is in the street of what? Of our assembly together that what? We receive the fullness of the Spirit. I know you are not confused. I've already explained that this context of personal. Uh-huh. So it's in the street of what? Our assembly together that what? Receive the fullness of the Spirit. That we are baptized with the Holy Ghost. That we are filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. I can't hear you shout hallelujah. So it's in this contest of our assembly together that what? We are baptized with the Holy Ghost and we are filled with the Spirit. And if you go back, don't, okay, that Ephesians says what? He gave us as, um, apostles and all of that for the perfecting of the sins, for the work of the ministry. So if there is no training, you can't do the work of the ministry. And training is in the context of assembly. Are you following me? Shout hallelujah. So, it's in the spirit of what? Of our assembling together that what? We receive the fullness of the spirit. We can't receive the fullness of the spirit without the, without the spirit of our assembly together. Are you following me? We can't receive what? The fullness of the spirit without what? The spirit of our assembly, assembly together. Because even that that can be received personally is because what? You are rightly connected to what? To the local assembly. The local assembly. Are you ready now, my friends? Are you ready? So I said, without the fullness of the Spirit, we can be witnesses unto Christ. Look at Acts chapter 1 from verse 1. I'll look for a good place to pause it. Then we'll continue in the evening by God's grace. Let me look for a good place to pause it. Well, let me read Acts chapter 1 from verse 1 to 8. Then we'll pick it up in the evening by God's grace. Try not to miss evening service. 
Look at Acts chapter 1 from verse 1. Are you there now? The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandment unto the apostles whom he had chosen. The whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, basing of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. We're going to verse 8. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, we set a ye as out of me. <laughs> oh my Jesus. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, we thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. Verse 8. But ye shall receive power when? After that you are born again. Don't worry, I'll still show you something. Maybe in the evening. I can't, even, I can't get it in the evening. Maybe next week. Are you following me? At this point, the disciples are already born again. But I'll show you. Don't worry, I'll show you very well. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Don't forget, he has said in verse, is it verse 5? That for John will be baptized with water. But in a few days you shall, be, you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. So, the Holy Ghost coming upon you is speaking about what? You being baptized with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Are you following me? But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon you. After that you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. Are you following me? So, what does the baptism of the Spirit do to the believer? But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon you. So, when the Holy Ghost comes upon the believer, when, when the believer is filled with the Spirit, when, when the believer is baptized with the Holy Ghost, what, what happens to him? What is the result? He receives what? Power. He does what? He receives power. Can you say power? Guys, you need power. If you don't have power, you'll be a useless Christian. And this power is not so that Oguanyo oh, Oniborimi. It's not so that Oguindili oh, Oniborimi. No. If you have this kind, this real power, this kind of power, are you following me? Ogwa Yosef cannot bury you. That one is normal. Because what, is, what this mama does to you, you are the one taking the battle to Ogwa You are the one going to the gates of hell. Are you following me? So if you are still a level of Ogwa Yema bury me, you are going to receive power. Because this power is only even at that level of what you are thinking. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come, is come upon you. So the baptism of the Holy Ghost supplies the believer with power. <laughs> Are you following me? The, the baptism of the, of, of the Holy Ghost does what? Supplies the believer with power. Can you say power? power. Can you say power? power? So the believer needs what? Power. Can you say Power. And this matter of power is so important. Go back to verse 4. We'll come back here. <laughs> and being assembled together with them, he advised them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Eh? Where are uh, you people didn't hear me? You're not hearing me. You're deceiving me. And being assembled together with them, he advised them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Did he advise them? Now, when you are advising somebody what happens, the person can accept or not accept. When you advise somebody, you have given the person that you have said that the person's opinion counts. Are you following me? If I'm advising you now, my sister, eh? I'm not commanding you. 
I'm advising you and telling that what okay, this is what I feel like you should do. That means your opinion is still counting in the matter. <laughs> Are you following me? Are you with me? He didn't advise them. He didn't counsel them. The Bible says he commanded them. Why will he command them on this kind of matter? Are you following me? Because it's a matter that has to do with their kingdom mandate, with their kingdom assignment. It's a matter that has to do with their kingdom service. So he has to let them know that what I'm talking about, what I'm saying, are you following me? Is a matter of life and death. It's a do or die of fear. It's not what you can do without. It's not what you can choose to have or not, or choose not to have. <laughs> Commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. But wait for the promise of the Father. We set in your hand of me. Because, are you following me? Eventually they will depart from Jerusalem. Eventually they will go into the old world. But if they leave Jerusalem without waiting to receive the promise of the Father, when they go into the world, they'll be corrupted, they'll be useless. <laughs> so many believers depart into the world without power. <laughs> are you following me? That's the reason why some believers appear to be on fire. Small contract enter their hand. They lose the fire. They get one small job. They lose the fire. They enter politics. They lose the fire. Are you following me? There's no baptism of the Holy Ghost. Are you following me? And this baptism, you receive it in our assembly together. Don't worry, I'll show you. It's a series. He commanded them that they should not depart. Did you think, why should he command them? That means this matter is not optional. It's not optional. He said, but wait for the promise of the Father. We said it, you have heard of me. Go to the next verse, verse 5. He commanded them. <laughs> for John truly baptized with water, but he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days ends. Wait. So what was he telling them to wait for? The baptism of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Are you following me? The what? Was he advising them to wait for it? Was he counseling them to wait for it? He commanded them to wait for it. Do you know there are some Christians in their place of work when they want to do fraud, they want to, they want to, they want to change figures, they can't call them. They won't let them know. They won't let them know. But there are some Christians that they are the ones that will spearhead it. That is wisdom now. So, you know, they are the ones they will call. Are you following me? There are some Christians that is them they used to call when they want to carry out an evil work. And there are some Christians that they will never mention it in their face. One has power, the other does not have power. Not be, not, I'm not talking of only a than that attitude though. I'm talking of a power that is emanating from your within. That is causing people to repent. That is causing people to have your rethink. That is causing people to change. That is bringing a, about a change in your sales business. But you have been baptized the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So you have to wait in Jerusalem until you be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Because without this baptism, you will be a mere ordinary and nominal Christian. Are you following me? You will be a Christian marking attendance, marking the numbers. But yeah, we don't want Christians marking numbers. We want Christians doing the work of the ministry. Because if Christians are merely marking numbers, the body of Christ cannot be built up. The body of Christ cannot be edified. Are you following me? The body of Christ, the church is only edified, is only built up when Christians, when saints are doing the work of the ministry. So a nominal saint, are you following me? A nominal Christian, a normal Christian, a, an ordinary Christian, not so Jim Jim, not so Jim Jim. <laughs> Better be Jim Jim. <laughs> not so Jim Jim. Jim Jim, Jim Jim is the way. Say Jim Jim is the way. Look at, look at someone and say, Better be Jim Jim. Some of you say, eh, I, I, there's this guy I want to marry, I love him. 
He's a Christian, but he's not so ginger. <laughs> he's not so ginger. <laughs> I love the girl. And she's in the choir. She's a Christian. Her dad is even a pastor. But she's not into, into, she's not really into church things like that. She's not really into Christianity. She's not really into it. She's not so jimji. Hey, see, if she's not so jimji, you can't marry her. If he's not so jimji, you can't marry him. He will pull you down. They'll pour water in your fire. Don't assume that you can be jimji. I'm marrying not so jimji. You also become not so jimji. And Jim Jim, it's not that you are tying, you tie your scarf, you wear a jab, uh, dress like an, uh, like an Hebrew woman, carry a jab. It's not that mean of, that's not the mean of Jim Jim. Jim Jim is that you are on fire for God. And it's obvious. Jim Jim is not religion, it's not being religious. Jim Jim, Jim Jim is that people say that this one is breeding kingdom, this one is Jesus, this one is Jesus born. He does his work well, yes. He's excellent in class, yes. But this one is Jesus, but his life is about Jesus. This one, Dave, Jesus has gone on to get there. It's an SU. If people have not yet called you SU, you are not yet, you are not yet serious. If they have not yet started calling you pastor, <laughs> you are not yet serious. You know, the people see you and they say pastor. See, in my house, where I just moved to, I asked them, I went to record, I went, this is my beard. I don't know, they just started calling me pastor. <laughs> you understand? Even before some people knew I was, I was a pastor, I was already here. Pastor, pastor. Something was show. Are you following me? So it's not by you carrying bail up and it's not by you saying bless you, bless you. No, I'm not blessing anybody. <laughs> don't mind me, don't mind, don't mind me. My wife is looking at me. Praise Jesus, everyone. Guys, you must be Jim Jim. I say you must be Jim Jim. Jim Jim is the way. We have to, we have to start doing our polos now. Jim Jim is the way. <laughs> Praise Jesus, my mama. I'm a Jim Jim Christian. <laughs> you are social. Are you following me? You are social. You are trendy. Are you following me? You love. You are. You you know fashion. You do stuff well. But you are Jim Jim on fire. <laughs> Without Jim Jim, you can't do the work of the ministry. <laughs> They will, pull, they will push you aside. One feel of cool lawyer. You'll be a figurehead. You, you'll be the president of a nation, but you'll be a figurehead. You'll be your class rep, but you'll be a figurehead. You can't, you can't influence anything for Jesus. You'll be the president of the overall student campus fellowship, but you can't influence anything for Jesus. Because I just know me now. I'm not so into it. I'm not Jim Jim. Look at somebody and say, marry a Jim Jim brother. Marry Jim Jim's sister. Must be Jim Jim. Love it. Your boy must be Jim Jim. The guy you will marry. He has to be Jim Jim. You yourself know must be Jim Jim. Are you following me? Praise Jesus forevermore. So he come he said, You shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. No many days. Yes. If you are not into it like that, you can't receive this baptism. They must see that you are into it, you are ready for it. Oh, the word Jesus is for them is a military command. It's a military term. He said he commanded them. That's military like. It's a commandment. Soldiers are commanded. They are not running. See, if, if, if this is, if this is, this is a soldier, this is a soldier, this is a soldier. Um, I'm this guy's superior in the army. You understand? He is this guy's superior in the army. Hmm? And both of them superior. If I tell this one that is junior to this one, if I tell him to slap this guy, he must slap him. Are you following me? That's the way. It, are you following me? You obey the last command. And I can tell you because I am his own superior. This one cannot say because this one is, is superior that he will not obey me. Who is the superior to two of them? Are you following me? So the military life is a life of command. They command. I let those guys die like, 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 like goats. <laughs> it's a life of command. They live by command. They command them. It's a military word. So Jesus, by this statement, has shown us that we are called to a military life, a militant life. <laughs> are you following me? He has shown that we are called to a Jim Jim Christianity. Are you following me? 
If you are not ready for commandment, you can't be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Are you following me? <laughs> he commanded them not to depart so that they can be baptized. So if you don't, if you don't want to receive the command, will you be baptized? If you are, if you are not ready for commandment, if you are not ready for military, <laughs> you can't be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Don't worry, I'll still talk to you about this baptism as we, as we move on. It's not just that uh, you're, not, you're not speaking in tongues. If you're not ready for gym, gym Christianity, you can't receive this baptism. You can't receive it. Because the baptism comes because you are living by commandment. Because they've commanded you and you're obeying the command. The baptism comes because you are enrolled in the school of mini, in the school of military, in the military school. The baptism comes because you are now a Christian soldier. Mubarak, you must be Jim Jimo. Ah, you have slept up in the Jim Jim manner. Ah, ah, in this service. Hey, please come and lay hands on this boy for me. You must be Jim Jim. You can't be Jim Jim and, and be sleeping off that way. We called you, called you, called you, not here. Ah, you need to increase your fire with this guy. You need to increase your fire. You are not Jim Jim. You need to be Jim Jim more. <laughs> so, the word is that he commanded them already shows that this is military. Are you following me? So, if you are going to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you must be ready to obey the command. You must be ready to, re- to live the military life of the Christian. You must be ready to be a Jim Jim Christian. Otherwise, you can't be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And if you are not baptized with the Holy Ghost, you can't fulfill kingdom mandates. You can't render kingdom service. Go back to verse 8. Let me just begin to close. Then we'll, we'll pick it up again in the evening by God's grace. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So, the reason why he told them to wait for the Holy Ghost is so that they can receive power. Now, what's the purpose of this power? Look at it. What's the reason for this power? And ye shall be witnesses unto me. You see that now? <laughs> you shall be what? Witnesses unto me. <laughs> Praise Jesus, Lord. These guys were already disciples. They were already born again, but they were not yet witnesses. Are you following me? You become a witness when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Are you following me? And you shall be witnesses unto me. So the purpose of power is to be what? A witness for Jesus. If you enter your campus as a student, are you following me? And you are not receiving the baptism of the Spirit, the coldness there would latch on you. Are you following me? It's not receiving power. The reason why you went, where you, where you were at home, you were on fire, you now got, got admission. You lost your fire. There is a coldness in that institution. You understand? There is a coldness in that your workplace. There is a spirit there. There is a spirit of hell there. That is keeping people in bondage. That wants to keep people cold and dead. And you are coming into that institution. And can't avoid it. The spirit will attack you. You understand? So Jesus knows that your engagement with the world, are you following me, will expose you to many attacks of evil spirits. And you engage in the world so that you can be a witness. <laughs> are you following me? But in your process of engaging the world, spirits will rise against you. Spirits will attack you. To destroy you in any way, to keep you cold, to keep you down. Why? To ensure that you are not a witness for Jesus. <laughs> so, in order to be able to stand strong and stand firm against the spirit and overcome the spirit, Jesus says the only what, the only way is the way of power. <laughs> are you following me? He says the only way is what? Is the way of power. It's power. 
The only way you enter an institution, educational institution, financial institution, what kind of institution, and you won't lose your fire, is that what? You have power. Can I talk to you? Walk can take away your fire. Walk can take away your fire. School can take away your fire. <laughs> can I shock you? Marriage can take away your fire. Are you with me? Can take away your fire. That's the reason that Jesus recommended what will keep your fire aflame. He says you need power. And that power is continually supplied when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. That power is continually supplied when you are baptized with the Holy Ghost. And a lot of this baptism comes in our assembly together. I'll still show you. So you can be a witness unto me. So you can be a Christian. You can be born again and not be a witness. Praise Jesus for the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Glory to Jesus forevermore. I'll just close it. I'll continue in the evening. Continue in the evening. I was just looking for a good place to land it. So we'll continue in the evening by God's grace. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Can you begin to appreciate God? You need to appreciate God. Thank Him for His goodness, for His kindness. Thank Him for His mercy. And his love. Thank you for his faithfulness. Because he's, he's good to us. Let's give him praise. Let's adore his holy name. Let's exalt him. Say thank you, Jesus, for your word that you have sent to us. Oh, we give you praise, Jesus. Exalt your name. We exalt your name. We adore you, Jesus. We adore you, Jesus. Adore you, Jesus.